Dr. Clayton here. I want to share with everyone the male facelift. How is it different than the female facelift? There's some several fundamental differences that have to do with the structure of the face, where the muscles are heavier, where the bones are heavier. We do not want to feminize a male face, but we want to accentuate the strong contours and jawline and cheekbones and also remove that extra sagging skin. Um, so it's universal that a patient will have jowling and that's that extra tissue when we age, even in men, you have osteoporosis of that zygomatic bone that starts involuting and everything starts dropping down and you start getting that big tear trough and all of this tissue is headed south and it all jams up here, getting caught on these retaining ligaments giving you this jowly look. The big part of this, when you perform a facelift in a male, is you want to understand how to hide the scars. Women wear their hair in such a way that you're able to put scars in different locations. For men, we often want to stay just underneath their sideburn, and then we want to come out in front of the tragus. The tragus is this little piece of cartilage that you have here, and in women, you would go back behind the tragus to hide that scar. But in men, they have beards, and so if you pull a beard out onto the tragus, it looks weird. And so you wanna put that incision in front of the tragus. And you still wanna bring it back behind the ear and hide it. And then you may wanna bring it down a little bit. You, you wouldn't wanna bring it down nearly as far as you would in a, in a female patient because the hair can really hide that. You would also make a small incision underneath the chin because you've got all this fat in here that you need to remove and you may also need to tighten up the platysmal muscles that have been pulled apart. Once we get inside the tissue through these more limited incisions, now what we're doing is we're looking at the same deep plane structure. We're looking at the same lifting of the platysmal muscle and repositioning it. So remember here, this is the non-mobile SMAS, this is the mobile SMAS, and so you need to go out about three centimeters before you dive down underneath this tissue, grab all of this after you've released those retaining ligaments and lift it back up. In the neck, you would do the same thing where you would come down and you would release that, that platysma muscle and drag it up here and secure it back behind the ear to create this nice sharp jawline and contouring. But again, you wanna be paying attention and focusing on the masculinization of the facial structures and not the feminization. So you wanna leave a nice strong jawline. You wanna make sure that that's very prominent. You wanna make sure that the cheek area doesn't become overly accentuated because you don't, that's an overly feminized look to have the cheek um, much higher. But really what it boils down to is there are a couple of basic fundamental elements. Some of them have to do with where the incisions go. Some of them have to do with how much of the neck tissue you're moving and then where you're repositioning this mass so you get a much more masculine appearance. So male facelifts, very common, very frequent, probably one of the areas that represents our fastest growing uh, patient population and very, very satisfied group of patients. It's not uncommon for a patient to come in and one spouse to do the facelift and then the other spouse to come in and say, oh, I, you look so great. So sometimes the husband goes first and then the wife. Overall, um, the main part of the facelift for a male is removing the extra skin, repositioning those deep tissues, and maintaining those masculine features, such as a really strong jawline and a nice prominent cheek area. Thanks so much.